So this Los Alamos sign is just a facade. It's actually uh, just a bathroom for people to stop in. Uh, it's kind of strange that they uh, didn't make like an actual guard station, but yeah, whatever. Jesus. Now there's two mobile security stations. I don't know what that's about. I don't think it's because I'm here. I think that's just a cool place to rest. Pretty sure. So today I'm gonna to go check out Bayo Canyon. Now this is the site where they did a bunch of implosion testing, 254 tests to be exact. And this left this area contaminated because they used radio lanthanum in these tests, which was very radioactive, but they used that radioactivity to study the bomb while it was exploding or imploding in this case. And so they'd have like these ion cameras set up that would collect all that gamma energy and then they would be able to interpret what the explosion was doing based off of all that gamma radiation. So this left the site pretty contaminated, it has a bunch of strontium-90 there and some uranium metal and some burial sites of where some of the really hot stuff was buried and it says do not excavate this site until 2154 or 2163, something like that. And so I'm going to go down there, check it out and see how radioactive it is. All right, let's get going. Cool place. Okay, here at the beginning of the Bayo Canyon trailhead. So I'm gonna make my way down to this uh, kind of cool feature where it looks like a uh, like big ruts maybe from giant trucks were like carved into the rock. I'm not sure, but I remember uh, coming down here once before and seeing these and I thought they were very uh, interesting. So I'm gonna do this upper part of the trail and then I'm gonna drive back down around and do the lower part, which is where all those uh, burial markers are for all the radioactive material that's still there in Bayo Canyon. So we'll see how that all goes. I don't know if I'll actually get to it today because there's a gate there that uh, looks like it might close at some point uh, when business hours are over. So I don't want to get trapped in there, so I might just do it tomorrow morning. And if that's the case, I'm just going to camp in Bandelier, a national monument. There's a campsite there. So that should be pretty fun. It's a really nice campsite from what I remember. So I don't know if those are uh, vehicle tracks back behind me, but they sure look like them. It sure looks like they've been carved into the rock. And who knows why, maybe it was a military vehicle for all those implosion tests down further down in Bayo Canyon. Uh, it just it really doesn't look natural. <laughs> it looks totally like uh, tire erosion from uh, really heavy vehicles coming up and down this trail in the past. So let's keep going. So I am running my Radicode 101 to kind of track the radiation in this area, to build like a radiation map. And I don't know how well that's gonna work because usually strontium-90, which is what I think the main contamination is here, mainly a beta emitter. So I'm not sure how well it's gonna get picked up by the Radicode 101, but uh, I'll run it still. I'll pull out the Rad IB20 every once in a while, just kind of check the readings see where they're at because I do remember this upper part of the trail did have an elevated radiation level so we'll see if that's still the case 
So this is like a little hill just on the trail. It looks like it's like a little pumice mountain right here. That's what this looks like. I mean, yeah, this whole area is like a giant volcanic caldera. An ancient, maybe extinct one? I'm not entirely sure. It's pretty cool geology though. But yeah, let's keep going. This must have taken a lot of vehicles to achieve. Because these are some pretty deep ruts in rock. I mean, this is like, feels like maybe kind of like a really hard pumice, like a volcanic rock. But still, it would take a while to do this level of erosion. You can tell it looks like they might have been dragging their diff, their differential, going through here. You can see like there's like a channel like carved into this rock. Probably just because it got too much. People that didn't want to straddle it right here. Yeah, it's pretty deep. <laughs> so this Rat Eye B20 has been giving me a little bit of a higher than normal background radiation here in this canyon at this upper portion. So there might be some level of contamination that's out here. I'm not sure what it is though. It could be strontium 90, could be uranium metal. Uh, it could be a lot of things. It's really hard for me to identify it, um, the isotope that might be out here. But it looks like it is emitting gamma radiation because it kind of seems like it's, it's picking up an additional radiation reading no matter where I point it. So I think it might be gamma. So this is at the upper portion of the Bayo Canyon, not the lower portion that has all those burial sites for the radioactive material. So that's kind of weird that it's all the way up here. But I mean, with all that testing that they did back in the mid 40s up until I think the late 50s, maybe early 60s, when they eventually stopped, uh, that would have blown a lot of contamination up this canyon and down it. So who knows? All right, so that's going to do it for this portion of Bayo Canyon. Uh, I've already hiked this entire uh, length of the canyon all the way down until the technical area 10, which is where all the implosion testing was done back in the day. And I don't feel like doing that this time. I'm going to try and see if I can drive into the gate there and drive all the way to the site because that just uh, makes a lot easier than carrying all this gear for a couple miles down this canyon and then back up to drop it all off when I'm done. So I'm going to head on back and hopefully we can uh, get this all done today. If not, we'll just have to pick it up tomorrow. I just don't want to get trapped in that gate if they close it at the end of the day. I guess that's one way to keep people out. Tell them there's uh, explosives on the other side of the fence. No one wants to go into a minefield, at least in my experience. <laughs> Some interesting signs. Glad I got a chance to photograph them. It's a very uh, interesting place to visit. I would uh, encourage people that are interested in nuclear power or nuclear weapons to come here and just drive around the area and see like the level of security that they have here. Pretty incredible. But anyway, off to the campsite. Not a bad place to make camp tonight. And then tomorrow morning, Bayo King. pretty nice here except for the coyote calls <laughs> in the middle of the night it sounded like there was a pack of coyotes uh, moving through here uh, a couple times last night and they woke me up 
Other than that, it was really quiet at a campsite. <laughs> All right, time to go to Bayo Canyon. Well, just my luck. The gate is locked over the weekend, so I'm gonna have to walk the two and a half miles to get to the site. It's not ideal, but not a deal breaker. All right, I need to get my water and stuff ready. Start heading in there. That's so cool. That guy is going back in there and opening up the gate, and so I could just drive on back there. No walking two and a half miles. Says I could uh, be there until it takes off at four o'clock. This is technical area 10 in Los Alamos. This is where they did all the implosion testing. This looks like a parking pad that's left over from here. Um, I'm going to imagine there are no structures left over here, but we're gonna go take a look at some of these do not dig markers that have radioactive material all put in there and see what that looks like and see if there's uh, any additional reading and then look at the fire zones, like where they actually conducted the implosion testing. Pretty cool, I'm just super happy I was able to drive out here instead of uh, walk two and a half miles. Not like two and a half miles is that far, but when you're carrying a bunch of gear, it's not convenient. All right, let's get going. It's so nice to be uh, back here and not totally exhausted <laughs> when I'm exploring from hiking the other direction. But yeah, so this is like the only thing that's like left out here, I think. It's like these like kind of asphalt and concrete pads over here. So there might have been buildings out this way too for all their testing. But I don't think there's anything else here right now. Let's see if I can't find uh, some scrap metal that was used in the implosion testing. I've seen people find it out here before. And some of it's a little radioactive because it has like uranium impregnated into it but we'll see what i find so this area used to be fenced off all the way down there and here's the entrance so this is the entrance to the technical area 10 on the other side i just had to walk it because i came here like three years ago something like that and there was this other fenced off area that a tree had fallen through it. And so I went and explored it and had all these other markers of radioactive material. I still have the footage from that and hopefully if I can't find this area, cause I, maybe they dug all that out. Um, I'll put that in this video from three years ago when I shot it on my other camera. this authorized personnel thing is still in effect since this fence hasn't been uh, since this fence hasn't been maintained in a while so I think I might chance it and check it out and see what all this is all about that one looks like some type of numbers in here like 18 I don't know what that's about Whatever this deal is. But yeah, I'm not seeing it right now. I'll see if I find it the other way here. But yeah, still need to check out the shot sites, you know, where they set off the explosives and see if I find any scrap out there and see how radioactive those areas are. First little piece of something I found here. Not sure what it is. <sighs> Just gonna put it right back where I found it.
I don't really find anything uh, with my rat eye. I mean, it's a little bit elevated, you know, amount of radiation here, but about the same as the upper Bayo Canyon Trail. So, nothing, no big hot spots yet. Still kind of interesting just to walk around and think about the history of this place. But, still haven't found anything. I'm going to go check out the markers now. Here's one of the markers. But the radiation is almost background. It's slightly higher. So I don't think there's any way to really detect what is buried underneath here. So I guess it's kind of a good thing. You can't detect what's buried down underneath here because that's kind of the whole point of burying this stuff and saying don't dig here. So then no one is, a, is unnecessarily exposed to that radioactive material. So good on them. They did a good job. I was kind of hoping to find something a little hot around here. But I got a couple more sites to check out. Eh, I'll see what I find. Another marker. This one looks like it had like a gasket on it. Something. I'm not sure why this one has a gasket on it. Maybe it had some type of plate or it's a one sealed canister underneath it. Slightly higher than background radiation. I know there's some people that say that Bayo Canyon is pretty contaminated and maybe there are parts of it, but I'm personally not finding any real signs of contamination. I mean, yeah, the background radiation is slightly higher than normal, but I mean, it looks like they did a good job cleaning up the place. As far as I can find, I mean, I haven't canvassed the entire area, so. Yeah, I don't know why they like buried so many of these, like so much of this radioactive material kind of like in these certain areas. Like there's one like further up the hill up here and there's this one and then there's two more over there. And so I don't know what was their justification for where they buried this stuff or entombed it or however you want to put it, but yeah. It's cool hiking around here, but I'm not really finding anything radioactive. Okay, so it took me a little bit of walking around without the camera to find some of these shot areas where they detonated the explosives to look for shrapnel. And I was able to find it, was just walking around forever, it seemed like, and I actually found a pile. Now what I was trying to find was a piece that was actually radioactive. And I was finding all these little pieces of shrapnel everywhere, but nothing was radioactive. Everything was completely inert, except for one. So I'm not sure where exactly 
in the whole implosion scheme of things that this little piece of radioactive metal came from. And I actually don't know what it is exactly. I don't know if it's uranium or thorium or some other long-lived uh, isotope left over from all that testing. I can use the Radicode 101 and hopefully this is giving off enough gamma energy that I could identify it. We'll see if I can do that later on. But for right now, I'm going to walk back out to the site so you can get an idea of what it looks like uh, where I was finding all the shrapnel. So that's how I'm finding the shrapnel. It's just all over the place. And this right here too. I'm on right now what appears to be like a little cattle trail. Because I think cattle kind of free roam through here too. Which is kind of funny to think about. Um, but just looking down in this general area, which I think is one of the shot areas. I mean, it only makes sense if I'm finding so much shrapnel here. But yeah, I, I only found that one piece that was radioactive. All those other ones were completely inert. Still cool to find. But if you've had a metal detector out, you can find some really big stuff. Maybe. Is it radioactive? No, it is not radioactive. Like I said, the majority of them are not radioactive. Yeah, it's getting kind of discouraged there for a second. I was like, just walking around looking and not really finding anything. And then all of a sudden I started finding little pieces of metal, shrapnel. I guess that's kind of how it goes, you know. <laughs> looking for something really small it's not until you start finding some of them do you start to see them everywhere huh let's see if I can find another hot piece Sure looks like it got smushed pretty good. Not radioactive though. So I found another piece that's hot. Doesn't look like much. But it's radioactive. Well, I think that's going to do it for Bayo Canyon. I got to get out of here so that dude doesn't lock me in. It was really nice of him to stick around until 4 o'clock so I could explore this area. And I'm glad I had the opportunity to do that. And so if you feel like supporting this channel and if you like this type of content, uh, head over to uh, my Patreon and become a member over there. I'll post uh, other stuff uh, there as well that I don't post on my other social media accounts and it'd just be a great way to support this channel and to help me fund uh, trips like this where I go out to the Trinity site or Bayo Canyon and looking at contaminated sites but anyway I hopefully you enjoyed this video and if you did a like maybe subscribe to the channel and I'll see you the next one take it easy